gentlemen. We covered the rules in the dressing room so you know my expectations. But as a reminder, watch your heads coming in. This looks good. This looks good. Let's keep them up. Touch gloves now. And back to your corners. This is a fight that was scheduled to take place May 20th on the Haney Loma undercard. The Nevada State Athletic Commission would not sanction Marquez as Vargas's opponent. And Marquez told me, look, I think this kid didn't want to fight me, and he's going to have to pay because I've Ooh. been training for him. And Vargas, he said, they're going to have to pick him up in front of his kids and his wife because I'm going to knock him out. He's going to walk him into a left hook. I'm going to tell you that right now, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say this stop, also. Stop. Hey, listen up. Stop. Step back. Hey, when I say stop, you listen. Do you understand? Do you understand? Thank you. Box. Marquez is physically strong. And he's coming in, not allowing the young Vargas to establish himself early. And he's showing no respect right now. He's trying to take him to a place. When I say let go, I expect you to let go. He wants to undermine the mentality and the fight plan that Vargas comes in with. He told me, look, he's going to have to fight a war for four complete rounds. And you talked about the strength of Vargas Alvarado. He's a roofer. So oh, you yeah. know he's used to working hard. Oh, what a nice right from Vargas. And let's see how Marcus Alvarado can recover from that right hand that stopped him in his tracks. Oh, you can be aggressive all you want. You leave yourself wide open, you will get caught, and you won't go to sleep. Oh, he caught Vargas coming in with a short left hook. Did Alvarado now with the right hand and immediately ties up. He's trying to make this a physical fight. Yeah, I mean, it, it's smart. Marquez knows that he's not going to outbox Vargas. So he's just, hey, he's pressuring. He's trying to keep him, keep him off balance, trying to attack him, trying to hit him anywhere. Vargas just turned southpaw right now. He's told us in the fighter meetings that he was sparring the likes of George Cambosas, and he sparred him, I believe it was eight rounds or six to eight rounds from the southpaw stance. Early on as a kid, he asked his father, can you teach me to fight Southpaw? Because he wanted to be better and have different options. And he's showing two minutes in that he does have the option to turn Southpaw and be effective, although he now turns to the orthodox stance. Punch your way out. Good work. Being a young gun and having to deal with this type of pressure right here, you got to keep your composure. Keep that head up. So right now you're seeing Vargas, he's trying to keep his composure and he's doing the right thing Punch by digging down to the body of Marquez to weaken Step him, back. to try Step to drain back. some of that power and energy that he's came out with. Box. Nice counter left from Vargas as Alvarado's trying to lunge Ooh, and there he connects with a him. nice right to the chin and Vargas has an answer. The body shots now doing a lot of the dirty work for Vargas as Alvarado once again is stopped in his tracks. Now a right hand from Vargas now standing from the southpaw stands and this is the war that Marquez wanted and Vargas keeping his composure will listen in to El Feroz Fernando Vargas. You gotta work as a southpaw. Hey, when you were southpaw, you were catching him every time he was coming in. He doesn't know how to deal with the southpaw. Keep using that jab. Just keep touching him with the right. And you're going to mess him up. Okay, left. Just use straight punches. Don't stand there with him. When you throw straight shots, that's when you're very effective. Yeah, straight punch beats a round punch nine times out of ten, no doubt about it. Here you're going to see right hand right there from Vargas stepping back, trading distance for himself, being able to see that right hand over the top of the jab of Marquez. Round two of a scheduled four-rounder. Vargas already wanted to be in a six-round fight. He comes out with a leaping right hand, and Alvarado felt it, but you could see the bravado in the fighter who stands just five foot four, but is a firecracker. I mean, he is a firecracker, yeah, but he's going to continue to eat those shots. No! And down goes Marcus Alvarado off of a combination. Six, seven, eight. You okay? Where are you going? Where are you going? 
Vargas playing to the crowd, and that could be dangerous if he loses his focus and his composure. But he's also enjoying the moment. He's enjoying the moment. He's not going to lose his composure at all. He has the cheat code. He has his father. He's seen it all. Beautiful setup right hand from Vargas. Nice body work from Vargas. Now oh. from the southpaw stands, he sets up an overhand right to the chin of Alvarado. V Vargas is just basically saying, if you want it, I'm going to give it to you. You know, Mark, Mar Marquez, you're going to come in there swinging reckless, leaving yourself exposed like that? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh! And once again, he's got Alvarado on his heels, and Vargas continues to land power shots from the southpaw stands. It's just a matter of time. Alvarado is hurt. Oh, he's hurt badly, but his heart is keeping him in it right now. The power shots from the southpaw stands, and now Vargas saying, how strong are you? Can you hold me and my weight as I come right into the wheelhouse and land those body shots? That was a low blow from Vargas. We see the blood emanating from the nose of his opponent. Spit oh. coming out of his mouth, and there's a right hand from Vargas of Flurry on the inside. He sees that the legs of Alvarado are weakening, and he's coming right at him. And down goes Vargas, uh, Alvarado once again. <laughs> when he spit out the mouthpiece, instead of getting himself more time, oh, yeah. he made the referee in this fight, Joey Chavez, the decision of saying, you're not ready to go. And Emiliano Vargas with the second round technical knockout win. He's got one punch knockout before, but Tim, this was a dominant performance from first bout until the Look, end. This young man, I'm going to tell you right now, this young man is special. You know, to be able to deal with Vargas the way he did, weathered the storm early, kept his composure, landed his kill shots, listened to his father switching southpaw, landing his shots there from that position, right side as well. He did a little bit of everything tonight. And Used his legs, came forward when he felt his man weakening. First knockdown right here. Check this out. Nice, you see him setting up. He's getting distance to be able to set up to launch that right hand. Springboard type of right hand. When he saw him step in, Boom, right hand, right off that back foot. As soon as that back foot hit the ground, he threw the right hand right over the top. And then he went and taunted him, and then this is a second knockdown, Tim. Yeah, it's just from just the, brut the, the brutality that he's been, been, been landing on his man all night. You know, finally caught up with him. He was hitting him with kill shots over and over and over, weakening him, and he just went down because of that. And there is the proud Papa, El Feroz, Fernando Vargas, and the rest of the Vargas clan behind him, his other sons, who are also fighters, enjoying the performance of Emiliano, El General, Fernando Vargas, because, Tim, he may be the most talented and hardest working of the young brothers. They're all good, but that young man has got something special, as you see his brother's proud of El General. You know what it is? It's the passion. Mm. When you have passion for something, man, you care about it, you cherish it, you love it, and you want to be the best at it. In boxing, this young man has been around boxing his entire life. Understand that. When I say he has the cheat code, he has his father, so he learns from his father's mistakes. Understand that. And he's willing to work hard to get what he really, truly wants. He wants to be a world champion. He told us in the fighter meetings, he said, give me two years. I'll be a world champion before I'm 21 years old. And with a performance like this, I understand the competition, but trust me, when you have a guy that's as reckless as this, he's dangerous. He forces you to make mistakes. This young man did not make a mistake. He wasn't spooked by anything he did. What he did was he kept his composure, he landed his shots uh, crisp, and ended this match in great fashion. And he forced the stoppage to earn his sixth professional win, the fifth by stoppage. And let's send it up to Mark Chinook for the official time. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the Desert Diamond Arena, referee Joey Chavez calls a stop to this bout at two minutes, 17 seconds of round number two, declaring your winner by technical knockout, El General Emiliano Fernando.
So Emiliano Fernando Vargas continues to make Papa and Mama proud. And you see the sportsmanship that he and Jorge Luis Alvarado Marquez have for one another. The respect earned after exchanging punches inside the ring. And respect is earned when you have two Mexican warriors going at it. And over the history.